Diagnosed by a fluke. I caught it very early. I understand with this disease, a lot of people don't. It's not caught until they're in kidney failure or having complications. So I was up in Aurora at my aunt's house where I had an allergic reaction, resulting in me going to the hospital, and they found that I was spilling protein in my urine. So they kept me overnight for observations. From there, they couldn't find anything else wrong. Everything was great. My kidney functions were stable and good. And so they just sent me with a referral for a nephrologist back home. I was following this nephrologist for about a year and he would just do routine blood and urine monthly just to make sure there was no drastic changes. This nephrologist retired, went to California, resulting in me getting a new nephrologist, which he, from the first day I had my appointment, he's like, what are we doing? Let's get answers. We're gonna do a biopsy and figure out why this is happening. So I had the kidney biopsy procedure done and it wasn't until a few weeks later we went back to follow up and get the results. And I will never forget this day. It's a very instilled it in my mind. I was sitting up on the table. The physician was to my left. My two parents were to my right in two chairs. And the physician kind of just looked at me, looked at my parents, and he said she has scarring of the glomeruli, resulting in she has a kidney disease called focus mental glomerulosclerosis. And I'll never forget, I was probably 11 at the time. I didn't really process what that was. I just looked at my parents to see what their reaction was and they just both were so stunned and I will never forget. I really didn't understand until later that this is this is something I'm going to have for the rest of my life. This isn't something that's just going to go away. So next I will talk about the treatment and prevention I did from there going forward to now. So with my particular disease, there is no cure. There is only a way to hopefully slow down the progression of the disease and help the damage not happen so rapidly and so quickly. Buys you some more time without dialysis or without complications. So with my particular disease, focus on mental glomerular sclerosis, my physician chose the route to go was high steroid treatment. So I was on high doses of prednisone for about two years straight. Horrible side effects, if you've ever been on prednisone, you probably know. Long term, it's not something you want to be on. However, it did help me out immensely and it did put me into remission. I stayed in remission for about 12 years. That's crazy. So for those 12 years, I really got to live a normal life. I was only on a blood pressure pill. And so that blood pressure medication just simply acts as a preventative so you don't develop high blood pressure. High blood pressure is very damaging to the kidneys and it's very likely you'll develop it with kidney disease. So it's just something that I was started on very young, very early, just so I could just kind of prevent further damaging in that aspect. Um, other than that, I never really had any complications until I hit about 40 to 50% of function left. Once that I hit that threshold, it's like kind of everything kind of started to happen. So from there, I started to develop anemia, which is low blood, red blood cells. Very common in chronic kidney disease, especially once you get down to end stage. So with that, I just do injections. I do air nest injections monthly. There's been two scenarios now where I have had unsafe hemoglobin levels where they've kind of creeped down below a threshold that they like it to be at with my disease. So in that case, those cases I have had to do IV iron therapy. And what that is, is they just hook you up to an IV once a week, they give you a bag of iron, and then you go about your day, you come back a week later, you do it for four weeks. And in both cases where I've had to do this for four weeks at a time, it has brought my hemoglobin up to a good, safe level, and it's worked great. And I've been able to just continue with air and S injections. On top of that, that's it for my anemia. Secondary issues also are hypoparathyroidism. So I just take a pill Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for that. I do take a pill for phosphorus. So every time I eat, I have to take a pill and it breaks down the phosphorus in my blood. And then on top of that, I just have to restrict my potassium. So all the good foods are pretty much out, like potatoes. So over time, you just eventually lose every last bit of your kidney functions. About two months ago, I fell into end stage renal disease. So that is where your kidney functions are 15% or less. So this is the last stage. So eventually I will need interventions such as dialysis and or transplant.
Transplant is obviously what I'm going for right now. It's what I'm trying to get. It's just, it doesn't happen overnight and it's a process and you have to have willing live donors. So in the meantime, the only thing I can do is, as far as prevention goes, is keep a healthy diet, healthy lifestyle, stay active. Hydration is key. You do not want your kidneys being dehydrated. Low sodium diet is important. And obviously being mentally healthy is also important. It's hard. Um, some days you just feel defeated, but you just gotta make sure that you cope with that in a healthy, healthy way.